From the murky waters of the sportsman's paradise, stories emerge. Stories of the generations of people who have shared in the bounties of the land. Stories of communities that have persevered through natural disasters. Stories of the abundance of fish, wildlife, and adventures that create an ecosystem rich in diversity. And from the silted banks of the mighty Mississippi to the soggy marsh bottoms, from the tops of towering pine forests to the depths of the salty gulf, human and animal have shared this fortune for centuries. Enjoy these stories as told by outdoor journalists who travel across our state documenting the adventure, sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. Hi, and welcome to another Bayou Wild TV episode. We're at Morton Seafood Restaurant on the banks of the Chifuncta River in Madisonville. Got some great food by here. Come by and stop by and see us one day when we're taping on Mondays. Yeah, we are heading back to White Oak Plantation. It's a chilly time of year, but certain types of hunting really heating up. Hog hunting. We're going to take you back to February of last year where we went on an airboat hog hunt. We learned about the problem of invasive hogs across the state. And then, of course, we wound up at the Boucheret celebrating the hogs at White Oak Plantation. So let's take you back to Wild About Hogs. Wild boar, wild pigs, or the feral hog as it's most commonly known, is not a native species to the United States. Many historians credit explorer Hernando de Soto as the father of the American pork industry when he introduced a herd of 13 hogs to a Florida colony in 1539. It didn't take long for the Native Americans to acquire hogs from the colonists as they learned of the many uses of pork. By the early 1600s, the hog trade among settlers had expanded from Florida through the English colonies as far west as New Mexico, and mainly due to their rapid reproduction, it didn't take long for wild herds to manifest along the southern region of the country. The hogs compete with our native wildlife for, re for resources, number one, food resources, uh, mast, acorns, uh, for instance. Uh, deer typically fatten up on acorns during the fall and winter, going into breeding season. Closed captioning made possible by CETO.com. Become a member. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because the flavor is so good. Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil has more garlic, onion, paprika, lemon, and not too much salt. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, and pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. in Louisiana in a couple of areas for 300 years. During that time, they really never moved out of that habitat. But in the late 80s, early 90s, sport hunting became very popular. And hogs, unfortunately, were moved to different areas to make it more convenient to hunt. But this rapid population growth has proven to have many negative impacts on the region's habitats and wildlife. So they'll go through the woods and vacuum up those acorns so that they're not available for deer or for squirrels or for turkeys, any of the other game species. So there's a direct impact there. They destroy everything they hit in. They 
they not just want to eat the top, they want to root up and just tear the roots up. That's what they do. And once they dig into the roots, this, you, this marshland out here is very frail. Uh, once, once you go in there and tiller it up, it's it. You know, you have nothing left. We have lots and lots and lots of reports, also scientific studies that do show when hog po populations escalate on the landscape, deer and other wildlife populations decrease. And we're getting a number of reports from our deer hunters in areas with very uh, thick hog populations that they're seeing fewer and fewer deer. And that's probably due to a combination of reduced uh, food resources, increased disease and predation. As the wild hog population continues to expand, many states have gotten fairly liberal with their regulations, which provide several different opportunities for hunters to harvest the animal. Hogs are hunted over food plots, hunted by the use of tracking dogs, out of helicopters, with rifles, shotguns, and bows. This place, unfortunately, used to be full of deer, and now the pigs are everywhere. Legally, you can shoot them during daylight hours on private property 365 days a year. Pretty action-packed, pretty fast. From the last day of February to the last day of August, you can shoot them without permit at night, simply by calling your local sheriff's office and the Wildlife and Fisheries office. You can also get a permit for the remainder of the year to shoot them at night. Um, so trapping can be year round with just a basic hunting license. Uh, if you want to snare pigs, you can do that with a trapping license. So hunting regulations or, or harvest regulations are very, very liberal for the landowner. But one of the most exciting ways to experience a hog hunt is from the airboat chasing them down through the marsh. All of a sudden, 10, 15 of them will pop up in front of you, and here we go. You know, hang on, because it's going to be a ride of a lifetime. And... For the alligator, there's nothing else out here that, that they have to be afraid of, except us. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right, boiled to perfection, and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. Lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D meets in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar, and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D, where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. We're out in Baton Rouge at White Oak Plantation, Chef John Fulce's estate for his third annual boucherie. Over 26 states represented here, the slaughter all the way to the cooking of the pigs. We will show you more of this coming up on Bayou Wild TV. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right, boiled to perfection, and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products.
Ronnie Adams of Elite Airboat Hog Hunting in Violet knows a thing or two about hog hunting. You know, the last couple years, I bet I've taken four or five hundred out that one little piece of property I got. Uh, me and Kimmy, we come in here and we hunt on a regular basis, whether we got clients or not. I mean, we just come and do it for fun. And for the past several years, he has shared with others the thrill of chasing pigs through the marsh from his airboat. Well, first thing we do is look for signs, you know, where they've been tearing up. And if they, they're locally tearing up, they're going to be in the area in the first thicket, patch of canes or the big, thick, um, thick pie fiend. The number one thing that I find all pigs love is this, uh, we call it three corner grass. It's like razor blades. Them pigs love it. And you'll see in the summertime that three corner grass is actually way greener than everything else. Every time you go in there, boy, you jump them pigs up like mammy jammy, boy. They coming out of there like that. They're just throwing them up out of that sucker. And they, you hang on to your horses, because here we go. You know, they're a little bit harder to find than you think. They're, they're, they're eating good out here and they have low clearance, so it took a little while to find them, but they're sneaky. Have you ever seen a grease pig contest where people chase him around? He runs zigzagging left and right. We kind of had to corral him a little bit, and he uh, doesn't really have the endurance for these airboats, so we ran him down. The sport of hunting hogs from an airboat is an adrenaline-filled experience. But participating in this activity is not just fun and exciting, but also another step towards controlling the population. We see a lot of damage in coastal areas, of course. Everywhere they root in that marsh causes damage, sometimes permanent, and we do see some of those areas near the Gulf where those areas where they root heavily turn to open water. So that's problematic. Destroy. They tear up a football field a day easy out here if you let them. You got to try to thin them out as much as possible if you don't, if you don't, uh, maintain 70 percent of the population you're not even keeping them at equal. Uh, the LSU Ag Center uh, did a, a survey of agricultural lands and found that uh, hogs account for over 70 million dollars a year damaged agriculture in Louisiana and that's not hunting leases, heavily forested lands, that's just row crop agriculture and so they, they do cause significant damage economically as well as environmentally. Hunters hold an important responsibility to help eradicate hog populations, but the state's wildlife biologists are constantly working to implement programs to use their scientific knowledge to combat the spread of feral swine. There was a poison, a warfarin-based poison, uh, that was registered last year, uh, and that registration was pulled because of concerns for uh, safety issues with other wildlife, particularly Louisiana black bears. Uh, that's still on the on the table and. Uh, we're evaluating some feeders to see if there is a feeder that would be safe for black bears. There's also another poison, uh, sodium nitrite, that's being investigated by the federal government, the USDA, and it's actually in field tests right now. And if it goes well with its testing and goes through EPA licensure, they're, they're estimating it'll be out and about on the, in 2020, the year 2020. To control them on a property, it takes a mix of everything. So daytime, perhaps nighttime shooting, trapping, try to exclude them from any feeders that you're not baiting them up to shoot them on.
took a few more of these destructive feral pigs out of the St. Bernard marshes today, and we're also bringing home something good for the grill and also for the frying pan. It's a dirty job hunting hogs in the marsh, but somebody's got to do it. Hi, I'm Donnie Rouse. There are a lot of different reasons to shop at Rouse's. It's the people. Everybody that works here is just so nice. Our stores get deliveries seven days a week. They have such a wide variety at Rouse's. Everything's in stock. I mean, everything. We use Rouse family recipes and ingredients found right here in the store. It's the food. Rouse's food tastes like homemade. And they're local. Like us. We also have great prices. That's the difference Rouse's makes. Here's how I guarantee my crawfish tastes great every time. I use what the pros use. I use Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Why do the pros use Louisiana Fish Fry seafood boil? Because, guys, it has more herbs and spices. It has a much better flavor. It's easy, just pour and boil. Louisiana Fish Fry brand seafood boil. Find the yellow bag, pour and boil for great crawfish every time. Find out if alternative treatment is the answer to your pet's health issues. Contact Dr. G at VetNaturally.com. Heavenly Father, you who created the skies, the seas, and the land, you who breathed your holy breath into every living being, be with us today on this celebration of life. We thank you for the bounties of your great earth, we thank you for the bounty of the animals. As you mentioned in Genesis, man is to have dominion over every living thing that moveth upon the earth, those of the land and those of the sea to be honored and to be respected. For they give again and again with each growing season. We thank you for the cleansing fire which transforms the bounties of the earth into the feasts for your heavenly table. We thank you for yesterday. We thank you for our fathers and mothers who taught us to be thankful and taught us how to do the work of your hands. We thank you for today and your faithfulness in the promise of your provision and the promise of eternal life with you in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Like many other cultures, Louisiana's German inhabitants celebrated the boucherie, or the butchering of the pigs in the winter months. This laborious task provided fresh meat as well as smoked and salted meats for families' use in the summer. This strenuous task was made less difficult and enjoyable because many families participated. Everyone was assigned a task from fire stoker to bristle scraper to boo dam maker. Before dawn, large cauldrons of scalding water were prepared over hot open fires. A 300 to 800 pound pig was slaughtered by cutting the jugular vein. The blood was gathered for making red boudin. The pig was scalded and the bristles removed, which was sold later to brush manufacturers. Then the pig was strung from a tree. The women removed and cleaned the intestines, which became the sausage casing. The pig was then cut and quartered into chops, spare ribs, roast, and bacon. No part of the pig went to waste. So for the biggest thing for me is I appreciate the, I want people to appreciate the whole, an, whole animal usage. And that's one of the biggest things why Chef Foltz and I have partnered together is because the Cajun traditions and the message that I want to preach are, they align with each other. This is a hands-on learning experience. You get to really see how the cuts, where they come from, how the dishes are made. Um, in each different cut of the hog, how, how do you butcher it? How do you clean that hog? You know, so it's, uh, it's just kind of keep people in touch with their food. 
We're proud of our tradition. We want the world to know it. The chefs and the butchers today, I think we have about 26 states represented here. Imagine that. Just to be here, not only to network, but to really, I mean, just get into the old traditions that we in Louisiana are really proud of. There's no better place to witness the creative mind of a chef than at a boucherie. And when you start to combine different cultures, what you get is an eclectic mix of culinary traditions that are sure to satisfy every inch of your taste buds. Backbone stew starts with a traditional roux. We use hog lard and flour, almost equal parts. You drop in your trinity and your stock. And this time, what Lou did is he browned all the backbone and took the meat off. And now we've added the actual backbones to there to get all the marrow out. Then once all the marrow's out, then we're going to take all the bones out so you don't have to fight the bones. And then we'll add all the meat. It's really funny. Uh, there's another farmer here. His name's Felix Flores. Uh, and he's uh, of uh, Latino descent, Mexican descent. And he lived in Houston. And so they do the montanza, which is like a, a, a spirit, more of a Spanish version of a boucherie. And in South Carolina, we have uh, a lot more English and Dutch. You know, whereas they do the hogshead cheese here, we have hash in South Carolina, which is with rice. A lot of the things that are being produced are very similar. Utilizing the whole animal from different cultures, they, everybody's done it differently, but the same. I love the boucheries, just because you got people from all over coming here to enjoy food, fellowship, beverage, to get together and enjoy the, uh, each other's company. I was in Israel earlier in, uh, this past year, and. Uh, there was a Jewish guy, a Muslim guy, and me standing there. And he's like, how about this? We're all standing here having a beverage and talking barbecue. So it, it brings people together. Daddy used to make Italian sausages. My grandfather used to make it with the grinder, the old hand grinder. Never had a recipe. Used to season it, then we would taste it, know what we needed to what add. We put in the sausage is, uh, is pork, which is the, uh, the butt or the, the shoulder. Uh, uh, a little bit of garlic powder, red pepper, flakes, uh, fennel, salt, salt, a little bit of wine, black pepper of uh, coarsely ground black pepper. We grill it. Now here's the secret: the sauce is olive oil, lemon juice, oregano, and garlic, and I put a little bit of uh, of sun-dried tomatoes in there too. I thought you told me you didn't have a recipe. I don't have a recipe. Well, we didn't tell you how much. I didn't tell we you how much. And, uh, so I was here for the first event. Been invited back to all of Tank's boucheries as well as uh, Chef Bolsa's boucheries, and then. Heading up the table doing um, dishes that are, are native to Mexico, but also involve uh, uh, indigenous corn and heritage corn as well. It's not indigenous to one area. Goat, the goat recipe that we're doing is, is going to be more uh, indigenous to the northern region. So my family's from Monterrey, Mexico. Um, so they do eat a lot of goat. Well, uh, part of what uh, John's told us over the years is that in addition to, to all the pork fixings, a lot of times you had stations where you had people feeding those working on the, uh, the pig. So this was one of the uh, side dishes, I guess, that they made to feed the crews as they were working along. These particular, I think you can do raccoon several different ways, but in these, this case, both the raccoon and the uh, rooster had been previously smoked. I think there are a lot of them are surprised the last couple of years who've tried it because it's really not as uh, strange as they think it is. You could try it right now if you'd like. <laughs> so that's the reaction we were hoping for. All right, we got it. <laughs> we're here at White Oak Plantation enjoying the feast of the boucherie. Thanks to many of these modern day chefs, the traditions of the early butchers will continue on to the next generation. And as many good cooks strive to do, the recipes that follow will evolve as new ideas are applied to old-fashioned techniques. Well, you know what's interesting about it is how many people tell me, thank you for doing this because this is what we used to do when we were young. So it just reminds them of living at home with their parents. I talked to a lady a while ago. She said, I'm 83 years old from Bunky, and we did this every year, every year. I hadn't done one or been to one, and I think about 50 years. And I, and I think preserving traditions is just about that.
In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection and rich with tradition. A taste that's savory, crispy, and a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. You can always check out all of our shows on our YouTube channel at Bayou Wild TV. Also, we've got some brand new episodes coming up early February. All the things we've been doing over the winter, some great new stuff coming your way in 2019. You can also follow us on Facebook and on Instagram where we've got a great contest going as well. Submit your pictures. Right. First, you got to get your Bayou Wild collection hats or shirts. Take them out there. Do something uh, crazy if you want with them. Send it into us. You could be a, a winner of a trip to Crawfish Haven, you and some of your closest friends, and enjoy some great crawfish. You get to go harvest the crawfish and then eat them as well. Out in Kaplan, Louisiana, we went out there last year. It's a great time. So submit those, send them to Bayou Wild TV at gmail.com. We'll see you next week.